so I'm a little bit nervous. I don't particularly want to show my face. Um, I recently read a book that I really enjoyed, but it really disturbed me. Let me start at the beginning. Um, I was raised Catholic when I was a little girl. I thought the church was very strange and odd and spooky, but I wanted to go to heaven and I wanted to be a good person, so I went to church and I believed in God. When I was about 13, a very beloved member of my family died in very terrifying circumstances. She was with her three-month-old baby. She was driving her car and they hydroplaned underneath a semi. According to the coroner, she was killed instantly, but the baby lived long enough to go to the hospital and be baptized, or so they told us, so that we wouldn't be upset that the baby had died unbaptized and not gone to heaven. So we had a funeral for her, and of course it was a Catholic funeral, and my auntie had a very difficult time finding a good man to marry. She finally found one. He was strong and brave and wonderful, and she loved him very much. And they finally found each other and had a child. But unfortunately, before he met her, he'd been married before. And his wife was not only very unpleasant, but she wouldn't grant him uh, an annulment. She gave him a legal divorce, but she wouldn't grant him an annulment. And because of this, in the church's eyes, they weren't really married, and they were living in sin. So during my aunt's funeral, the, uh, the Catholic priest went out of his way to drive home the point that because he had committed a, her husband had committed this the sin of adultery with her and she hadn't confessed before she was killed instantly she had died in sin and she was going to go to hell and probably the baby was too and it was all his fault in the catholic faith the priest is meant to be the direct conduit between man and God. This is very confusing to me because what the priest was doing seemed to be very evil to the strong man who loved a woman a lot. And instead of comforting him in his hour of grief, he made him break down and cry, humiliating him in front of his dead wife's family. And I thought, what kind of God would send an emissary to earth to do this to a family, to do this to a man, to do this to a loving husband who had just lost his wife and child, and I've puzzled about this all my life. And then I finally found this book. It's written by a man named George Wilkinson. It just came out this June. And it's called Jesus is the Criminal from the Planet Uranus. Sounds like a very strange title. And you may think that Wilkinson is something of a strange man. He's very upfront about the fact that he has multiple personality disorder. 
and the book is written from several points of view. There are several narrators that argue with each other throughout the book, but part of the reason for this, I believe, may be the strain on Wilkinson's mind of a truth he discovered in another book, Long Lost, 45 years ago. 45 years ago, he read a book by a British author called Paul Brunton, which introduced him to the idea that um, Jesus wasn't the Son of God at all. He was actually a criminal who escaped from Uranus after committing other childish slash horrible pranks and uh, who was no longer welcome on his home planet. So he came to Earth to create a cult that would divide and mesmerize Earthlings for thousands of years. Wilkinson finds this conclusion to be frightening as well. I find it to be very frightening, but I also find it to be congruent with the feeling of dread that I felt sitting in the church, looking at that plaster statue of Jesus, nails driven through his hands, bleeding, suffering, making me feel bad because my sins and the sins of my adulterous dead aunt were driving those nails through his innocent hands. But what if his hands were not so innocent? What if Jesus was just a drama queen? What if his entire death cult, hidden in the guise of a life cult, it's just a giant prank on a foreign planet designed to make us fight with each other. It makes sense. This death cult has been part of the inspiration for an even more destructive death cult, Islam, whose leader, probably a human, but possibly an alien, clearly modeled his shtick on Jesus's and then bumped it up a couple of notches with pedophilia and Jew killing. Well, it's not like Jesus' disciples didn't kill a few Jews at any time either. All in all, most people see Christianity as a force for good on the earth with a few downsides. It has its weaknesses. But what if it is just a horrible prank? What if Jesus is actually a juvenile delinquent from Uranus? To quote from the book, all in the ultimate wars of destruction with the motto of winner take all mentality. To make the matter much worse and bewildering now, a massive number of extraterrestrials are born and live as terrestrials and become terrestrial spirits. They create these widespread inhuman atrocities in different parts of the world because they are inhuman. It's no different than in the past. They are the results of these proxy wars where living humans are used as puppets are mere fleshy objects to serve their purpose of display of power as to who can butcher or torture the most. This is more the modus operandi of the extraterrestrial than the earthly ones, but often it's hard to distinguish one from the other, looking at how each one displays their barbaric controls. 
Each group is in the incessant pursuit to outdo the other. The other common den denominator is their indulgence in aggressive sex. I believe the aggressive sex really does not describe them fully. It's butchering sex. Although the reader may well be familiar with Jack the Ripper, serial killer, let me remind the reader there are millions of Jack the Rippers in various forms of expression. Their modus operandi is not just sex, it's the butchery during and after sex. More than often, it's just the extended torture to the victims with their screams, their desperate begging. That's when the perpetrator ejaculates, not when the actual intercourse takes place. Now I am crying while I am writing this. Okay, okay, I understand sex, but why butchery and dismemberment? For God's sake, why treat our women with such extreme disrespect, humiliation, as if they are mere pieces of flesh to play with? Okay, I must stop now because I am too emotional. Some of the prose is challenging in this book, but the main drive of it is Maybe the reason Christianity is so dramatic and goth is because Jesus was kind of a drama queen, and he wasn't here to do us any good. He may not have actually been here to willfully do us harm, but he certainly didn't have any intention of going out of his way to not do us harm. I wouldn't say this book has completely solved the mystery for me, but it has certainly lessened it. So for anyone who is interested in the mysteries of why you sometimes feel bad when you go into a church, why you sometimes feel like it's more of a haunted house than a place of worship. I highly recommend you take a look. It's not pretty, but it is very interesting and you may find it satisfying. Thank you for listening.